proudly we hail. Hello from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. This is C.P. McGregor speaking and welcoming you to another broadcast of Proudly We Hail, a program of your War Department. Through the courtesy of the Hollywood Coordinating Committee, we are happy to present John Hodiak, who will star in our play, Valiant Coward, written by Tom Petty, with music by Eddie Skrivanek. <laughs> The man standing on the Beach City Pier waving to an old boatman is Donald Phelps. He seems nervous and uncertain. What's that? Well, uh, never mind. Forget it. Forget what? Well, forget I called to you. Forget you ever saw me. But I ain't seen you good yet. I'm looking right into the sun. Is that your boat? Yep. Well, I'm looking for someone to take me over to Mountain Island. Ain't I seen you around here before? If you're the same Jake Denton who used to run a ferry service to the island, you've seen me often. Well, dang my eyes, it's Mr. Phelps. <laughs> <laughs> you've been gone from Beach City three, four years. Four years, nine months, and 12 days to be exact, Jake. Now that you've welcomed me home, let's get started to the island. I see. That's your automobile over yonder? Yeah. The car will be all right there overnight, won't it? I want you to pick me up again in the morning. Well, save it any place, I reckon. Uh, if it's a boat ride you're looking for, come on, get in. Right. I, uh, went by the ferry slip, but it's been torn down. Doesn't the ferry run anymore? Uh, nope. What's the matter? There uh, ain't enough customers. Uh, don't need a ferry. Oh, I suppose things are pretty run down on the island. Guess my shack's really a shack now. Nope. Well, what do you mean? I mean, it ain't run down. Looks spick and span. Well, well, it couldn't after all these years. Not my cottage. It could. If somebody been caring for it. But I didn't ask anyone to look after it. Appears to me somebody didn't need asking. It seems likely you made a mistake moving away from Beach City so suddenly. Look out, man! You're going to turn us over! Uh, ain't nothing turned over but my bait bucket. Channel's a little choppy, that's all. I never should have come back. You never should have left. A good lawyer like you'd been the county judge for now. But I had to go. I couldn't stay. They turned you loose, didn't they? The coroner's jury said you didn't kill your brother. You haven't forgotten a thing, have you, Jim? Nope. Right about here's where it happened, wasn't it? Yes. The squall blew in from the other side of the island. The sailboat tipped over. I don't want to talk about it. I do you good. But I didn't drown him. He was pulling me under. I had to hit him. Look out for the wave. I'll watch out for the wave. You quit shaking and acting like you're scared of a little water. Maybe I am afraid of the water. You know I'm a coward. Everyone knows it. Never heard it mentioned. You used to be a first-rate sailing man. You mean to say you quit sailing? Yes, I'd quit. For good and ever? I don't know. I'd like to find out someday. I tried to sail my boat the day after George was drowned. What happened? I couldn't. I didn't have the courage to go 100 yards from the pier. Could have tried again. But I didn't. So you gave up everything. Your law practice, the girl you was going to marry, all your friends, and ran away. You seem to know a lot about my affairs, Jake. Well, Beach City ain't a big town, Mr. Phelps. I've even got an idea why you came back. You gonna try sailing again? Yes, Jake, I'm gonna try. Just being able to sail a boat is the biggest thing in my life right now. If I can do it, well, it's the key to a lot of other things. Hey, uh, want me to help you get your boat in shape? No, I'll have to do this alone, I'm afraid. It ain't right for a man to have to do anything alone. Uh, looks like we're getting in. Yeah. Hey, there are a lot of new houses on the island. And a lot more on the other side of the hill. I don't see anyone around. I suppose most of the houses are closed for the winter. Yep. Might be a few folks still around, but not many. Weather's been too bad. They're likely to get worse. Hey, I can see my place from here. Clean as a whistle and every shutter in place. That's what I told you. Uh, I'll uh, walk over there with you. I'm sort of curious to see inside. No, Jake. I, I think I'd rather go in alone. I'll have you in tomorrow morning when you come to pick me up. You may want to leave before then. What makes you think so? The storm warning's up, likely to blow a gale tonight. You might not like it. 
Maybe I won't like it. That's something I'll have to find out. Tomorrow morning will be soon enough, Jake. We pause briefly from our story, Valiant Coward, starring John Hodiak. Now, Wendell Niles brings you an important message from your war department. Do you know what the following are? The Angels, Cavalry Troopers, Red Star, Hourglass, Victory, Tropic Lightning? These are the nicknames of six of our most famous Army divisions, now stationed in Japan and Korea. They are the 11th Airborne, the 1st Cavalry, the 6th Infantry, the 7th Infantry, the 24th Infantry, and the 25th Infantry. Young men who join the new regular army for three years may now enlist directly into one of these six well-known outfits. Many of the 40,000 good jobs available each month to capable young men are in these divisions. Here's your chance to travel and see the mysterious lands of the East. You'll learn a valuable trade or skill and be well paid. The starting pay of a private overseas is $90, and he receives free food, clothing, lodging, training, dental, and medical care. Stop in at your local Army recruiting station today. If you qualify for a three-year enlistment, you may be assigned directly to any one of these six historical units that you choose. Act two of Valiant Coward, starring John Hodiak as Donald Phelps. Donald remained inside his cottage most of the day and went to his boat in mid-afternoon, raised the sails, but his hands began to shake and he returned to the cottage. Yes, who is it? Well, let me in, Don. It's pouring rain. Alice! Yes, Don, it's Alice. Remember me? Please, Alice, as if I could ever forget. Here, let me take your coat. Oh, thanks. How did you know I was here? You drove into Beach City at 10 a.m. Old Jake Denton brought you to Mountain Island in his fishing boat. He's coming back for you tomorrow morning. <laughs> Old Jake was right. Beach City is a small town. But you shouldn't have come over here in the rain. I had to see you, Don. You wouldn't come to me. I couldn't, Alice. There was something I had to do first. And I haven't done it. I know, Don. Old Jake told me. You have to sail your boat. You're confused in your mind and, and think... Being able to sail has something to do with your fear. I've been a coward, Alice. I was a coward when I let George drown. I was a coward when I tried to sail my boat the next day. I was a coward this afternoon. And I thought you were running away from me. Oh, you're no coward, Don. You've just let yourself become confused. Alice, this cottage, you're the one who's kept it clean and neat. Yes, I... I always knew you'd come back. But I, I thought it was George. I thought you'd fallen in love with George. And I thought you believed I let him drown because of that. Oh, Don, you are confused. George said something to you when you were struggling in the water. What did he say? Nothing. How, how could you know that? What did George say? I can't tell you. You must tell me. Well, after the boat keeled over, a gust of wind blew it away from us. We were swimming easily when George yelled, I've got the cramps, Don. When I reached him, he grabbed me. I had to hit him to keep him from pulling us both under. He slipped through my arms. Yes, that's what you said at the inquest. But what did George say to you there in the water? Well, he... He said you were marrying me only because you'd promised. That you really loved him. And that if he had to drown, he'd take me with him. He pulled me under once. And it was then that I... That I hit him. You were only trying to keep alive so that you could keep him from drowning. He wanted you to drown. I, I don't know, Alice. I know, Don. I know, Don. But I let him drown. Not until you'd used up every ounce of your strength trying to save him. You were unconscious when those fishermen pulled you out. Unconscious from a blow on the jaw. I never told anyone that. I was never sure how my jaw was injured. George had murder in his heart when he left me to go sailing with you. Oh, I should have warned you. He hated you because I loved you. Oh, darling. What a fool I've been. A fool and a coward. Oh, that's all in the past, darling. Listen to that storm. We've got to get back to the city. Well, why hurry? It's snug and warm in here. I don't believe I'm afraid of the sea anymore. Well, I am. If that hurricane hits us, it'll blow this cottage right into the ocean. Hurricane? I'll turn on the radio and we'll find out about the storm. The hurricane, the lead moving seaward, has shifted direction and is bearing down on Beach City. It's expected to strike Mountain Island in the next... 
next hour. Bulletin service will be maintained. Oh, come on, Don. Hurry. We've time to make it before it hits. All right, Alice. You're drenched and freezing, darling. Oh, who cares? Look, there's the pier. Oh, you made it. Don't ever tell me again you're afraid of anything, Don Phelps. You've got real courage. Hello up there. That's you, Jake? Yep. So you sailed her in. I knew you'd do it. Yes, Jake. Here's the line. Okay. I got her. I'll tie her down. Although it won't do much good when a hurricane hits. Hurricane ain't gonna hit. Dang things turn back to sea. Oh, that you and there, Miss Ellis? Oh, you drove over to the island in your car. Well, I did, Jake. What? Drove her car to Mountain Island? It isn't an island now, Don. The causeway was built two years ago. What? And you sailed into a hurricane with me. Oh, you're the one with courage. After this, I'll never let you go, darling. <laughs> This is C.P. McGregor speaking. I hope you've enjoyed our proudly we hailed story starring John Hodiak. Before leaving you, Wendell Niles has an important message for all of us. Everybody talks about the weather, but nobody does anything about it, said Mark Twain. That may have been true in his day, but today the United States Army is doing plenty about it. Army Weather Service technicians are flying specially equipped planes on a regular route from California to Alaska. They report data that may affect conditions in the United States 36 to 48 hours later. In all kinds of weather, these observers report hourly on temperature, wind speed, direction, precipitation, and cloud formation. This information is relayed immediately to stations all over the country. Another group in this country is on constant watch for atmospheric disturbances, such as hurricanes and thunderstorms. When their radar detects such a disturbance, they head right into the center of the storm. Hundreds of delicate instruments inside the plane record information valuable in studying weather conditions and designing planes for rough weather travel. Other units, through the use of special equipment on balloons floating through the air, collect data, instrumental in forecasting and charting future conditions. In Europe, the United States Army Weather Central, consisting of 35 strategically placed stations, accurately forecasts weather on the continent. As a result of all these Army services, air travel, both commercial and military, is made safer. Weather forecasting is just one of the many tasks of scientific nature carried on by the new regular army. In the fields of medicine, electronics, atomics, engineering, and many others, the army is making daily research. Each month, there are 40,000 good jobs in such work open to capable young men who can qualify. An army career is an interesting and high-paying one. You earn while you learn. For overseas service, a soldier gets 20% extra, and every three years, an automatic 5% raise. Ask your local Army recruiting station today about your chances for a good job with high pay. They'll be glad to discuss your qualifications with you. Thank you, John Hodiak, for appearing on this program. Proudly We Hail will come to you again over this station next week. Listen in. <laughs> <laughs>